All right. Welcome everyone to the Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting, Thursday, August 8th, 2024. Please stand to pledge the flag. This meeting is being recorded and live streamed. Um, signed warrants. What's the matter who reads? Your microphone. Good. <laughs> I, I, I can hear Jake yelling from Italy. <laughs> Fiscal year 25-03 payroll in the amount of $167,948.62. Fiscal year 25-03 accounts payable in the amount of $226,388.34. And then fiscal year 25-01 transfers in the amount of $550,660.65. All right. Uh, topic number one, public comment. Discussion regarding guidelines for discussion of current agenda item. Richard Actually, Chief. Mr. Chair, I believe uh, Mr. Chief, you would like to make a uh, recognition announcement. Do you want to do that now or you do it now? Oh. Yeah, I was going to do it at the end, but I'll do it now. I just want to speak about the water department and what they had going on. I know the water department just got done finishing about just shy of 2,100 lineal feet of pipe in the walk in a cemetery. Uh, we had some volunteers helping our <coughs> water superintendent, his dad, Bruce Clark, put in several hours uh, for free. Ralph Mundell as well helped out down there. And just want to say what a good job the water department did with the help and then the cemetery commission or the other employees actually uh, picked up some of the loose ends and did quite a bit of work and got the project done a couple thousand dollars under budget and did a great job so uh, just wanted to send a little shout out to thank them sounds good um do you want to take number one number two or number one? It said Rich will take oh, lead. Yep, okay, sure. So public comment again. Uh, we've talked about it a couple times and I'm really, uh, I have a strong opinion that if someone has the courage to come up to the selectmen's meeting and takes time out of their schedule that they ought to be able to participate in a s conversation with something that we're talking about when we're talking about it, right? So say for example uh, number three or number five and I don't want to be held here for hours but I do think it's important that if a resident is willing to come up that they should be able to be heard and uh, I'm in favor of putting a time limit on it and and uh, if it gets excessive then maybe we can even cut the time limit uh, down some mm -hmm. but I, I firmly believe that two minutes to give someone that's a long time for someone to talk in most cases I know we got the email here. That's what I was looking at when I was on my phone. And then I also sent, I had just done, had done some research ahead of time in regards to public comment and I pulled. Yeah, the old what, policy? No, this is what other towns have done. Okay. I had talked to a couple other towns and they basically said like, in light of everything that's changed in the last year, they've come up with policies to kind of just give a framework um, in light of all the you know, Mr. Chair, in, in short, town council, uh, their, their advice and recommendation is that yes, it is absolutely acceptable to yeah. put limits, reasonable limits, uh, such as a, a time limit and to have it specifically, the comments specifically be specific for to the that agenda. agenda. Item. Correct. Yeah. 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 So that's all perfectly acceptable. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and I'm comfortable with that. I just think. I think most of my concerns have been surrounding the fact that one, a lot of times enough doesn't seem to be enough when, with regards to, to comment and that a lot of times it was kind of a random topic that actually put us at risk with open meeting law mm -hmm. because if it came up through public comment, 
but it wasn't on our agenda, somebody could basically say that we're non-compliant because well, we're we now get sucked in. we're not we get yeah. sucked in yeah. and now we're discussing something that wasn't on the agenda and if we make a vote or a decision about it then we've just put ourselves in a bad position so yeah i agree I, and i'm gonna hope I, that the chair keeps us in topic yeah. no, I, I would I'm, I'm i would kidding. i would also <laughs> i would also recommend that we put in writing some of the same um I want to call it rules of the road that are part of town meeting, which is that you address the board, not someone else who has commented, no direct back and forth with the audience. I think all of those things are, and, and like you said, you did your research and got yeah, I think and, a lot and of that's contained in here. I didn't right? go in depth into these, but so in summary, it seemed like that's basically pretty much what there. they're saying. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Do you want to go as formal as this, or? Um, There's different. There are different yeah. things in there. No, I understand. And there are similarities between some of them as well. Yeah. S yeah. Some are just open comment periods. Some are against the agendas. I think we do need a written policy. I think we could vote on the intent of it tonight. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, if fundamentally you would want to open up tonight's agenda for comment or not. Um, I don't care. Yeah. I, I'm okay with opening it. I see yeah. some people here and if they yeah. want to so, speak, I'm okay with it. So I think what we would want to do is. But I'm, I'm is, also. Was there, okay with putting the policy in place after this evening if, if that's what you yeah, prefer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 my thought is that procedurally is that we could come up with some functionally bullet points of what the policy would contain, the intent of the policy, right? Was there one of the, uh, was there one no, of these I that you had, that had a chance to it. do it? No. Okay. Let's start with the one that honestly looks, I hate to put it this way, Pembroke is the easiest, it's a one pager, it's the easiest one to read. The only, the only problem with that one that I found yeah. is it doesn't have a date. So I don't know if it's in compliance with the SJC ruling. Right, well I can tell you right now it's not because 11 okay. we can't put in there, right? So disrupt, you know, we can say disruptive conduct won't be tolerated, but disruptive yeah. comments is too open to the to interpretation. Yeah. So. Um, you know, fundamentally, fundamentally, we can't control content other than topic, mm -hmm. right. right? So somebody can express themselves however they want to express themselves, but we can limit the topic to in the topics at hand, mm -hmm. right? So um, do we want to just kind of go through their 11 points and pick the ones that Sure. We think is it aligns with the intent of mm -hmm. what we want to do, and then we can. So we might as well just lay it flat now. So I like the fact that it does limit it to citizens, taxpayers, or employees of the town. That way you can't have somebody just swing in from outside the community. Yeah. Can we find out if that's consistent with the, with the law or the more recent court cases? And yeah, I would say, I, and I would not have the or, like on the second one where it says board's responsibilities and identified on the board's meeting notices because I, I don't think that's an or because our responsibilities are functionally everything in the town. I don't know how we're gonna get through this the citizen versus taxpayer if it's a newcomer to town. So yeah, I guess you're, that, not, you're not gonna know. That, that is somewhat of a concern well, going forward, but uh, I mean, I guess if we reasonably try to limit it to that, I guess. We well, if they state their their name, you could say affiliation and address. Okay. 
because oh, address that's, what would that's what it says on number three yeah because yeah. that way we would know you know okay i'm good with that well and i mean if it's a a business coming into brookfield they're going to state their affiliation which right. is going to indicate right. right so and i think four it's basically two minutes two minutes yeah right yeah i'm good with that If we want to make it a round number, we should not say not exceed either 14 or 16 minutes, and that gives time for either seven or eight people to comment. Which do you want to do? Um, are we allowed to do that? I, that I might think be a slippery I, slope. I, I think. I think until this becomes a problem, until we start getting an excessive amount of people, Just then we minutes. deal with it at that point. But okay. I don't think we should limit it to the number of people. Okay. So why don't we just leave four off then and just, or have four, the equivalent of four just be that. The two um, minutes. That it's two minutes two per minutes. person. Yep. So, and we would adjust ours to close the business Monday, right? To get it on the agenda, because they'd have to get with the office by Monday for it to be on the agenda posted by Tuesday for Thursday. If we're talking about the issues that we have on the agenda, yeah. that, do we even need to have that in there? So I think we do because one of the things that we have said previously is that if somebody wants to discuss a topic that they need to get on our agenda. So I think that's consistent with what we've said in the past. But I think that would be a different circumstance, right? Like, in my opinion, uh, that if someone wants to get on the agenda, they typically see the chair. So that wouldn't be really relative to, say, someone speaking tonight on our item number three. So maybe it's a... if. If they if somebody wants to speak on a specific topic, they should confirm with the selectman's office if it's on an upcoming agenda. Well, for example, that might be like general advice instead of a requirement. Yeah, but for example, if Don is here tonight to talk about number four, and he didn't discuss it with us previous, I don't want to not let him speak. I want to let him speak. So no, I, no, that, that's that's not what this says. Oh, okay, though. all right, I just. So that's not what this says. For, Right. For getting items on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. So, because okay. it says at its discretion, the board may schedule issues raised by a speaker for deliberation at a future meeting. Yep. Right. Um, but it's just And slightly. to submit their topic for being placed on the agenda. So yep. basically, if it's not already on the agenda and you want to talk about it, you need to get it on the agenda. Yep. So that's. Right. That, that in no way limits them to speaking on a topic that they talk to the select board's office about. Yeah, and if you look okay. at this one, I don't know what town this is. Actually, they have a whole section, public comment and participation in a matter not identified as an agenda item in the notice of meeting without select board participate. So they got it broken down into two. There's one here that says public comment and participation in a matter identified as an agenda item. Yeah. Is it fair to say if you believe your discussion item is going to be longer than the two minutes allocated, the recommendation of the board is to get it on the agenda so that sure. it can be a lengthier discussion? Sure. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fair enough. So I like six, even though it's not enforceable, right? Mm -hmm. So six basically says, please try to keep it polite, but it doesn't have really functionally any teeth. So I don't think it would violate anything. And it might not be a bullet point. That might be part of just like the overall. Isn't that already part of our... Like code, code of conduct, anyways. Yeah, but that's more for employees, not for someone coming. Employees no, and volunteers. It's also visitors. And volunteers. And visitors. Yeah. Well, it is for visitors too. That's yeah. true. Yeah. 
But mostly uh, that comes down to the disruptive conduct versus disruptive comments. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody's comments were profane enough that it could be con construed as a threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or <laughs> or a breach of the peace at that point, right? Yeah. So. Yep. I like eight because I think it kind of tries to set that boundary of there are some times when we may hit the timeout button because we're going into territory that violates open meeting law or somebody's rights. Yeah. I don't understand number nine. I think number nine is more like anonymous complaints rather than comments. We can discuss things without talking about the source if we choose uh, 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 uh. to. I think that's how I read it. I don't know if we even need to. I would leave ten off totally. And and you're thinking nine? We don't yeah, need to come in. I don't think nine or ten. And again, 11 is. I think I, we're. I think 11 is fine if you take out disruptive comments and just use disruptive conduct. Um, I don't know that we can actually regulate profanity, though we actually have a public. I think we have a public profanity bylaw, so we can write a civil ticket. It's a ticket. 50, fifty dollars or something. Yeah, <laughs> so we could start writing civil. We could start writing civil citations if uh, if, if someone gets too profane. So. <laughs> I'm down with that. And I think we could do each instance. So if it's worth it to somebody for $250 to swear at me, then oh well. Did you pick right. up on anything in the other ones that you were scanning that, that isn't covered here? I think we may want to take a clue from the language from some of the others, because I think, I think we probably need something more this format, but I think the content is decently covered there. This one I must be missing the first page. There's another one that is I'm not sure how much Ron how much work Ron has for this week, but if he could, you know, kind of polish this up for us and give yeah. you How's your workload? Yeah, I had emailed it to him too. I mean, yeah. he could go out to Stam and get all the other town administrators to chime in. Yeah, what, yeah. what I could certainly do is, you know, based upon some of the discussions and, and the bullet points uh, throughout our discussion here, we'll kind of cherry pick you know, what how yeah. other communities have addressed that, mm. cobble it together into some type of a, a rough draft. I mean, of I'm policy. not looking to have this thing go three, four pages because the, the Pembroke one is pretty good and. Yeah, it hits the bulk I, of it. I would think we could probably keep it to one at it. most, you know, yeah. page and a half. Was, yeah, page and a half ish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think there's some language missing from this that needs to get in. Like, yeah, I, I think, agree. I think some of the legalese up front needs to go in. Um, and actually, the one from, I'm not sure which town this is. Um, they have some good language around um, the whole threats of violence, job performance and decisions, that sort of stuff. You may want to just look at that for some of the verbiage on the other ones. They also have some nice wiggle language where it says that that the duration of public comment period will ordinarily not exceed a certain amount of time, which kind of sets a expectation without necessarily putting a hard limit into place that could be perceived as limiting people's access. So we could pick some amount, sure. like 15 minutes, and, and just say it generally doesn't exceed that. 
for the for the length of the meeting for the, sure. yeah for the total yeah. total yeah. public comment yeah that's good with me So I'll make a motion that Ron take a shot at drafting a policy in line with what we just discussed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll put a second motion on the table that today we'll accept public comment for things that are on the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 for a bit so um, next item on the agenda is to appoint uh, the highway commission uh, we currently have a slate of uh, Bruce Clark Scott Slawoski and Rich Chafee and is, is Scott here no he's not okay I'll, I'll I, I fill you in on it, I take it he's a person known to you because similar to you I'm, I'm, I'm always hesitant to yeah I'm getting hesitant yeah. so to if I give you a little background know. on him maybe you'll have a better feel for it but his he's a longtime resident he lives in town he's currently the foreman on the North Brookfield Highway Department he's extremely talented he's their fabricator mechanic foreman he goes out plowing he does what, whatever he needs to do in the town of North Brookfield and he's been there several years I want to say in excess of six although he did leave for a short time and then came back he just took like a three-month hiatus and then came back he's uh, he's a problem solver when it comes to uh, problems that the Brookfield Highway Department needs help with he's he was down at the Highway Department a week or two ago working helping diagnose a vehicle he's uh, he's worked on our street sweeper he's just done numerous things for the town and, and he's a gentleman and you know but if you're reluctant I understand but I would like to get this committee going as soon as possible no, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I was also gonna say I got one individual that said they'd be interested in another and he said he also has another person Don Taft and what was the other? Well, it's still Bruce. <coughs> well, I don't know. But he, I so just talked to him today, so I got nothing. So, so here's the thing, though. Did we say three or five for I, the committee? I, I'm sure. concerned with number five. Uh, we have a committee for the water department. They're water commissioners. That's three. Okay. Um, my concern is once we start getting too big, too many cooks spoil the stew. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, but here's the only problem, right? With with three, if you have two people in a room, you're violating, potentially violating open meeting law. Mm -hmm. And if you're and, and working I, on projects. And if you're working on projects, yeah, it's really right. hard. So, I mean, so, so my thing about it would be with five, three is a quorum. It's easy to, easier to, it's easy to get that quorum without cr chronically being exposed to accusations that we're violating open meeting law. So if we so, had to buy a new piece of equipment, you and this Scott guy could go work together and go take a look at stuff. Right. But that again wouldn't be a violation of the open meeting law if we go look at something and we bring it back to the board. But the fact of the matter is Well if you if you'd have to post it as a site visit. So right. so there's ways around it, but you have to be very coordinated and and again the perception the, the risk would be the perception, right? Yeah, I mean we've done it as a board even recently, right? So I think I just, uh, I'm gonna make a motion that it only be three people, and you guys can shoot it down if you want, but I, I feel strong that it should only be three and not five. It's just much more difficult to get 
five people together than three but works for the water department. You don't, you don't need you don't need five. Well, so the, the other thing I wanted to bring up, because this is the other phone call, I, a few phone calls I've had is. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. And, and I don't know how to go into this without breaking rules here, but basically I was getting asked the question, why do we even need an advisory committee for the highway when they're under the direct control of us? You're the liaison. Um, Ron's the town administrator. You know, essentially, why do we need another layer of government created? I, I agree because initially, when this came up with Beth and I, and when we, we discussed it, yeah, I was for it. I have literally flip flopped on this a half dozen times mm -hmm. in the last week. I feel very strong, like exactly what you said. I'm the liaison. I can report back to the board as well as report back to Ron like I have been. We have we have a grossly underperforming highway department. I wouldn't go well no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I said highway yeah. department. Yeah. It is grossly <laughs> underperforming. The morale down there is horrific, uh, as I believe you guys are aware. And it's just I I think there's I think we could justify making some changes down here easier with a committee. However, I think without a committee, we could get the same thing done, but it's probably gonna take a little more participation of the board than, and maybe some additional meetings, but, but for all intents and purposes, the committee is only gonna make a recommendation and then come back to us anyway. So to Brad's point, what are we doing with the committee? So here's my take on it. I've had several people who previously had recommended this feel very strongly that part of where we've gone wrong with all of our last couple superintendents is not pro providing enough guidance. Okay. So we can take on that ourselves, right? or we can look at a way to provide potentially better continuity in that because we turn over, you know, one of us turns over every year. Yes, sometimes the committees would potentially turn over just as much, but the flip side of it is, is as an appointed committee, you can sometimes get better stability in those roles. Um, and it, it's more, if you have a diverse enough committee and, a, and, and that's the other reason why I like a, a five person committee, just through their sheer contacts with people within the community being the faces of it they're going to hear things that we may not get as 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 frequently or as directly it's my thought um i, I can go either way like i say i have flip-flopped on this multiple times and i'm struggling with myself right so i'm not dead against the committee but I want to have action immediately because of what's happening down there. It's horrific. So uh, well, and I mean, I'm good as long as we get the committee uh, appointed tonight, frankly. That's my goal. Well, Ron? if we have five people, we then. Just, just appoint them. I mean, I mean, here's we, the thing. Right now, we have five names. We lose nothing by having it be a right, five-person We can always committee. go down to three if and we, we can, need to. We can always go, one, one, we can always go down to three. Two. I, I think it's it's one of those scenarios where, yeah, yeah, I think people who are volunteering for this committee are interested enough in, in getting engaged that you're not going to struggle to get a quorum, you're not going to struggle to get stuff posted, you're not going to struggle to get people to to tag in and have conversations, right? So, um, I I would just I, I hear what you're saying. Do we really need a committee? Maybe, maybe not. I'd like to have one so that we can leverage it um, because if we don't need it, I think for some of the day-to-day -day direction that you're talking about relative to the overall performance of the, of the highway department right now, that's not actually what we first envisioned this committee for, right? right? But, what, but it now, seems to now, need, now, but we need it now. But like. we 
do need it now and and they can they can go beyond i think the original scope was intended to be more kind of like helping to put together the plan helping planning, to get in, in, ensuring yeah. ensuring that they 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 got a, a more coordinated you know whether it's a ticketing system or just project punch list or or whatever in place right um i think the day-to-day -day operations and the stuff driving potential you know morale issues or what have you that's something that gets handled directly whether this commission was set up or not but i think you set up the commission in order to do things like what's a reasonable level of of service when you get a uh, a resident complaint about a particular situation right more policy type decisions um as well as potentially approach decisions like you know whether it's edge cutting or, or prioritization of particular washouts yeah. or, or whatever we have going on. So um, I'd like to make a motion that we just appoint all five individuals previously well, mentioned. The, the problem the with that is I have two others that sought me out that wanted to be on the committee <laughs> as well. So, so we've got people, so, fighting. So yeah, we got people yeah. fighting to get we on We can't it. get them on any other so board, then, but they <laughs> want to come on this one, right? right. So. Everybody and their brother. No, the planning board's got a few people trying to get on there. Well, yeah, so is, so is CONCOM. -Con. All of a sudden, everybody wants to get involved. That's awesome. I don't know what we're doing right or wrong, but at least at least it's getting engagement. So. Uh, Mr. Chair, I guess maybe towards the, where the discussion seems to be heading, I, I did take a, a crack, if you will, at a, a rough draft for a mission and responsibilities. Yeah. And it does, as far as responsibility, it does more or less uh, long-term strategic type of things, five-year project plan, five-year capital plan, review of policies and procedures, things along those lines. So it does kind of focus more out in that strategic management, which, you know, frankly, is a lot to throw onto a highway superintendent whose main focus is going to be operational, day-to-day -day operations. So I, I think it can, the, the committee can at that 30,000 foot level, fill a, a potential void and add value in, in that regards for that strategic thinking, especially if we have the right type of uh, folks on that committee that have experience and they can think strategically, which frankly, it certainly seems like the, the three we're discussing this evening would fit that bill. So some of the markups I put to this, but I think we're under the first paragraph, I think we need to talk about the types of equipment, not only the roads and bridges, but the equipment, trucks, loaders, backhoes, uh, other equipment that gets maintained on a daily basis or, you, uh, or whenever it's used, right? So I think, I think something like this is good and we just tweak it a little as well. Wouldn't it just be like, like town owned roads, bridges, and supporting fleet? Oh, yeah. Right, and supporting fleet rather the, the than fleet is fine. Yeah, not because fleet covers, yeah, Bruce Bruce covers Clark, everything. Bruce Clark, when Bruce Clark was at a, an employee on the water department, he would spend maybe 12 to 15 hours a week at the highway department, and and they maintain things impeccably. Right, so we probably have the oldest fleet of equipment in any of the Brookfields, and it's the most functional. I mean, our trucks go back to the 80s. I, I do want to warn, we might be straying a bit far from an appointment if we start talking about the charge itself. Frankly, I, I oh, put it okay. in there more for oh, so gotcha. probably 815 <laughs> okay. for, for a, a full discussion and the, the tweaking or amending. Okay. All right, so we'll handle that on. So, so I have a proposal, right? So we've got five members. What we, we, we were we putting, we, we were putting together a, a, a charter for five members, right? We have two more. Four more. Uh, right, two more, two more. Well, right, originally I more. thought three, then you thought five, and then I said I think there's as many as seven. Right. Okay. So here's I, my I, thought. I've heard, I've heard here's my thought. The three, well. the three, the, the th <laughs> we, we, we form the committee as having five seats. We appoint the three that are actually on the agenda because that's the only yeah. people we can really talk about tonight. And that can get them going. And that can get them going, right? Yeah. And then, and it's even better because two of you can be in one place and since there's five seats on the committee, you're still not violating open meeting law because it takes all three of you to have a quorum, 
okay? So that actually puts you in an even better position for forming up, okay? And then we put on a future agenda, getting the names, resumes, and hopefully face-to-face -face with the other four people that are interested in the other two slots. Yeah, I'm yep. good with that. Good I yeah, good idea. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. All right, well, there you go. Great minds. <laughs> Great minds think alike. All right. So, so your motion was, was, was your motion was, was out seconded. there. It was seconded for discussion. So we'll just kill that, or and then go okay. with yours to okay. Because mine was for three people, so okay. we'll just. So do you do you want to call the vote. the vote on his original motion? I thought the original was just to appoint these three. It wasn't. So no, much. his 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 motion was that there'd be three only people. three on the commission. Oh, okay. All right. So, so we need to we need to vote. So that. we'll vote that. Right. No. No. Yes. <laughs> okay. So All right. Now go with your motion. All right. So my motion is that we we form up the committee as a five-person committee, uh, and and uh, and appoint as the core of that committee the three people indicated on the agenda: Bruce Clark, uh, Scott uh, Slavowski, and uh, Rich T. Second. Before um, we go, before we go much further. Are we going to uh, choose to stagger the terms? Are they going to be three-year terms, and are they going to be staggered? Because if so, then we should probably put in a. We we'll go three, two, eight. one. That's, okay. That'll be how, six. That's how so I'm going to be here for three. I'm sorry. Yeah, three, two, one, three for three years. When I well, but I would do it. In, I would do it in five. reverse. Okay. I would do it in reverse, just because you're also a selectman. I would make you the one one-year member. <laughs> Fine. Because so. we always need someone on the select board on it. Is that was that yeah. the deal? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can make it ex yeah. officio. Yeah. So, so, so I'll, I'll let me amend the motion. We'll do. Uh, well, let's do Scott for three years, Bruce for two, and Rich for for one. Okay. Well, I can come up and sign it. <laughs> So I mean, are you done with the motion? You're not meeting with them tomorrow or anything. I mean, it's Friday. probably Monday. Br Bruce yeah. had wanted to stop in Monday. Monday. Right. So, so I can meet up with Karen on Monday and sign it and okay. everything be done. So Great. are you done with the motion? You're good yep. with that? So I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Mm -hmm. You can do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we said Scott two, yeah, or Scott three, Bruce two, Rich one, was, was what the motion was. And then we'll discuss the other two next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Discussion regarding remaining ARPA funds balance and potential additional allocations. Uh, Who's yeah. taking that? Yeah, I'll, I can kind of take the ball and start to run yep. with it at least. Uh, this is a, a lot of it is really just more informational and just to make sure it stays on everyone's radar screen. Um, we do have to, at the very least, encumber uh, the remaining balance of our ARPA funds by the end of the calendar year, so 12-31-24, uh, or risk losing it back to, to the Treasury. There is a safety net, if you will, if we haven't decided you know, definitively on how to use everything, but it would still entail having a special town meeting to take whatever remaining balance is, and once again, prior to end of calendar year, having that special town meeting, then reallocate that fund, or the balance of that fund, into a stabilization fund or something along those lines that could be used at a later date. But at this point, we have, um, nearly $85,000 that has been unallocated. So that's that's completely open to be, um, I guess, reallocated or, or used however the select board decides. There is 60,000 that's been allocated but has not been actually expended. So a portion of that may or may not become available as we get further along in those particular projects. So it, as you can see, it's a significant amount of money. So I just wanted to make sure it was on the select board's radar screen and we did start to begin to think how we wanna allocate the, the remaining balance. 
Ron, have we heard back yet about, I know there was an application in for basically engineering or a study on making uh, 18 common ADA. Do you, do you know from Lindsay what the status is of that grant application? I do not know. I could, I could certainly double check with, with Lindsay. Okay. Yeah. Could, could you check that? Because I think depending on what the engineering came up, that may be a good opportunity yeah. to well, and the other thing fund I the just changes for that. Thought of because we don't know where the money's going to come from. It. Oh, is the webs. What about the website? I mean, because we had, Kelly didn't throw any money in there, and we have to do something for the website by the end of the year. Good point. That's true. It's, yeah. Don't, it, I don't know that that's something that can be done with the ARPA money. Though. I don't it, know. It, yeah, it, I think it, it is. I thought it was no, but no. I think that's originally it was, but then with their, their final ruling for the treasury. I think North Brookfield they, redid their website. Yeah, they it. basically cut nearly any and all strings attached. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would be, I, I would support that. So I don't know how much we, we want to go into details on, on what we're going to use the additional money for, but if it's not off topic. I'm waiting to hear back from the DEP regarding the study, the air quality in this building. And one thought I thought was, I spoke to Lindsay, we cannot get a grant. I'm sorry. I was say, getting, getting that carpet up. Getting this carpet and maybe refinish the floor. So we cannot get a grant for the interior of this building and speaking with Lindsay. But, but the other thing that's really pressing that this money could be used for is storm windows on this building so that we stop the flow of the heat going right outside. However, in speaking of Lindsay. Oh, you know, I think we actually agreed on that with on the board. ARPA. Who? We did as a board. You, well, you were here. Remember when I, we said, I said, you said we, you we were would look, look into, into it, it, but I didn't realize that. And I think that. it was because of the ARPA when we had an ARPA okay. discussion. So the problem with that is in March, we can reapply for a grant for the storm windows. There was a study done in 2014, and that study can be redone, and we can apply in March, according to Lindsay, when she checked into the grant. So do we want to jump the gun and do the building and stop the, the dollars from flying out the window all winter, or do we wait and, and put it off one more year? Well, let's but I think there would be enough money to do both if, if we did, or all three things. I could certainly look into, you know, the, the library annex uh, grant status, um, the, the website proposal, uh, the town hall windows, and things yeah, along those lines. If we had enough for the windows, it would be nice. Just to stop the, yeah, and then, and then the, depending on what the air quality comes back at for the building, this, this floor is a real pet peeve of mine. And so. Don, Don wanted to speak. Town Hall, and they've been town talking hall. about it. Are you speaking as yourself or as the Town Hall Improvement Committee? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Is this on or not? Press that button. Green light. Okay. Don Tapps, 20 Lane 21, Brookfield. Oh, following the rules. <laughs> <laughs> My, before we talk about the Town Hall, let me, let me go back to the original comment about having ARPA funds. And as some of you may remember, we did this Green Street project, and uh, it was under budget and on time. But at the annual town meeting, we voted $47,000 to pay for, from this year's money, to pay for the project that was completed last year, which I'm not sure is legal, but the vote was made. The reason, theoretically, that that vote was made was because there was insufficient funds. Well, the original contract was supposed to use ARPA funds. Where did the money go? Uh, Ron, have you? Yes. I, 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 <laughs> and, 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 uh, oddly enough, uh, in fact, Mr. Chafee happened to walk in on the discussion as we were finishing up with the advisory committee. Uh, advisory committee had the same exact question. and. I mean, roughly, the, the chronology events is on March 31st, I believe, 2023. Uh, according to the minutes, there was a discussion regarding um, Green Street and a couple other 
uh, highway type uh, uh, proposals and, and projects. There was discussion about utilizing, in fact, the, at the time, the current highway superintendent had even indicated a preference to using ARPA funds. The consensus amongst the board at the time seemed to be this made sense to utilize the ARPA funds for these particular projects. There was an actual vote taken for, I believe, the Central Street project. Um, I believe it was somewhere around $147,000. The problem is that was the only vote that was taken by the board to actually allocate ARPA funds. So the Green Street project, although there seemed to be a consensus, there was no actual vote taken, at least according to the minutes. As such, it was never recorded on the town accountant's ARPA spreadsheet, and as a result, it was never, al uh, never actually uh, input with the Treasury website, which keeps track of, of uh, ARPA funds for each of the munis municipalities. That's where the disconnects came from, where people thought ARPA money had been allocated for it, and there may have been, as I said, there may have already been consensus in the discussion, but the vote was never taken, so it never truly got allocated. However, the contract was signed, and when the contract is signed, it's, a, it's saying that we have money to pay for this. Yeah, I, I cannot speak to that. Um, when, I guess way back, you know, prior to annual town meeting, when I brought it to the town accountant's attention, she was comfortable that everything that was being done was according to the letter of the law. I, I'm still not comfortable with voting money from this year to pay for last year's project which was completed last fiscal year i don't know if that's legal if it's not we have opera money available which was the original tent i think of signing the contract and funding for the contract so before so what you you're saying is to take it out of arpa and refund the free cash money back to free cash for next year that's my thought and, and the only way to do that is actually through a town meeting. Yeah. It has to be a yeah. town meeting. So my question, my question is, at the town meeting, did it say raise an appropriate, or did it say real? I don't know. I don't remember what the no, warrant. I think cash. it was from free cash. Okay. Yeah. Free cash. All right. Okay. I, I agree. I think it was free cash transfer. Okay. Yeah. All the articles. I don't think we had a single. Okay. I don't think we needed one. So I, I guess in the grand scheme of things, then that becomes another potential option for utilizing the ARPA balance. And once again, only the select board can vote to allocate a penny of ARPA funds. So, so in the grand scheme of things, there's really nothing we need to decide tonight. No. We have right four to five months to figure it out. And so that would give some time to figure out what's going on with the ADA accessibility at the library, whether that grant comes in. We'll hopefully in the next week or two, we'll know about the air quality tests. So we should just kind of table this and until we have a little more information. Town Hall Improvement Committee has talked about removing this rug, uh, not we don't have funds to refinish the floor. Uh, since the Town Hall Improvement Committee is basically um, a committee of five, <laughs> we would need a would need a crew. We'd have to have a work party to come down here and remove remove the carpet, which could probably be done in a relatively short period of time if you had enough people. The question is, what's the condition of the floor underneath it, and how long could you live with whatever that condition is until? you appropriate some money for uh, refinishing or whatever you're going to do. Uh, if, if you would like the Town Hall Improvement Committee to put that on the agenda to get it removed, we could do that. But like I said, it would, be, it would have to be, maybe we can reach out to the fire department on their work night and have them come over and help us. I, I, right. I mean, wh whatever, three, I don't three know. Three people could take this carpet out in an hour's time, but I don't think we should be even setting that schedule until we know one what the air quality came back at and two i could take up a small portion and put it back to know if yeah, it's the, just plywood under here and not even no, not it, even the old floor no, i would think it's the the, the big problem would be pulling pulling up pulling up the tax strip probably 
I mean, you could cut it and roll it up in sections and take it to the dump, but but who knows what the floor looks like underneath well, that's it. Exactly. It's it's too flat for me to say it's not plywood. I think there's plywood under it. I, I have could be wrong. I there's no probably idea. like little on. Yeah. So on top I, of it again, I think we're yeah. a little premature without knowing the answer from the DA. And that's why that's why the town hall improvement committee didn't say let's do it because because yeah. you'd rip it up and it's plywood, you and, know, it's going to look was, pretty stupid. Was Bill because I was at that meeting, was he going to Jason Petraitis about getting a rough idea of what it would cost? I don't well, it all it. depends if we're just going to sand and finish or we're going to put new flooring there. So yeah. again, I think we're way too I think he was going to talk to us. You, need, you need to pull up a corner and see it's, what's under there. It's roughly $2.50 a square foot to sand yeah. and finish. So it's yeah. pretty simple math to know what this would be. Okay. And then you're going to get well, should we do that office? Well, should we I do think this we office? definitely yep. should I mean, do I mean, a couple of the offices yep. while we're doing yep. it, right? I mean, yep. While they're here. I mean, we did the the uh, town clerk's office. That looks great. Yeah. If you're going to do this, yeah. yeah, I think it's time we put a little bit of money into the building. We haven't, right? I mean, the floor well, is something I, yeah. that's. And I think I was going to put that on an agenda coming up. Yeah. About figuring about where we are with this thing. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So we staying off of this then? Pass yeah, over it. So I think I think we're aligned and holding off on a decision for now. But but this was informational. We know how much money roughly we have today, though that could change, as Ron said, from month to month as the other projects complete. So. Yeah, I'll gather the information. I think we probably want to get, if we can get numbers on some of the other projects, like if we could get some quotes out there for the website just so that we know, so that if we get to like December and we haven't allocated it anywhere else, yeah, you not, know. I don't want to give it back for sure. Right, right? exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So, okay. So um, because it may not be quite enough to do the windows or what have you. Does it give the clerk? Let's get some numbers on some of that so this that we can talk about it smarter. I'll make a motion if for no other reason for discussion for to sign the contract between town and Weston Sampson of Rocky Hill, Connecticut for engineering services related to Kimball Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I guess we didn't need a lot of discussion then. No. No. <laughs> We haven't spent much on the grader, but it sounds like everybody is aligned that we don't need to have it take up the equivalent of oxygen in the highway barn. So a little over five years ago, Ryan purchased some packings for some of the pistons to slow the leaking that it was doing. And, and the packings he repacked with are, are good on those cylinders. However, he just didn't see the need to keep going. So it was a very big minimum, zero money in the last five years, mm -hmm. five and a half years, it was a couple hundred bucks. Yep. So do we want to? I'll make a motion that we put it on municipid and see what we can get for it. I, I think the appropriate motion is declare it surplus. Okay. And I dispose of it in an appropriate manner. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signed 2024 warrant for state primary, 9-3-24 election. Someone want to make a motion? Make a motion to sign the uh, 2024 primary warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thumbs up. I'll make a motion we appoint Christopher Roberts to the Cultural Council. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 What else we got? Discussed response to open meeting law violation complaint July 18th, 2024. Ron Show. Yeah, uh, in your packet you see a response that I have uh, crafted in regards to the open meeting law violation complaint um, received on uh, July 18th. Uh, specifically, there was two, uh, two main complaints, if you will. One is that the agenda item uh, for the board's meeting was insufficient in that it used the terms concerns and compl uh, complaints. and. The other was um, with uh, regards to a May 30th complaint, uh, or excuse me, a complaint regarding May 30th um, that had not been reviewed as yet. And um, with regards to May 30th, I would, uh, for next meeting, I'll have a, a, a similar response for, for the board to review. But I don't know if you want me to actually read through the, or if you, the board wants to read through it or, how do you want to approach that? I'm, I'm fine not okay. reading through it, but it's, uh, I'll let the other board members. I already I mean, read, read it. it. <laughs> I've um, read it. I'm, I'm comfortable with the content. Do you want to sign it and deliver it or sign tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I think the way I worded it was uh, if the board authorizes me to, to sign and then send uh, a copy of the response, not only to the, uh, the complainant, but also to the office of the attorney general's office. I make mm -hmm. a motion for you to sign and deliver to the parties mentioned, both the complainant and the uh, attorney general. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, discuss, review, additional information pertaining to tree trimming and removal. So I was able to visit the highway department and come up with a list of trees that were done as far back as 10, 16 of 18. And in doing so, in most cases, we did equal to or more trees than what was done under the new tree warden um, with the highway department's assistance. And the way it ran, some of the work, the way it was done with the dates of the tree work versus the fiscal year, it was basically, for the most part, under $300 a tree. So when you take 80 trees, the budget used to be really low, 12, 15, 18,000. And we were doing the same number of trees roughly that we did for approximately 62,000 with just the two person crew versus a tree truck with a person running the tree truck, cutting the trees, and then the highway department doing the rest of the work. It just. One, one of the questions I have about that is because extra money got put into the tree account, but was never expended. Mm but we had all these trees done, well, where did the money come from? Well, if you go back to 10, 16, 18, that was under two way highway superintendents ago, not, mm -hmm. that was un, under uh, Herb, Herb Chafee, right. right? So back in that time, I vaguely remember like a $12,000 budget annually right. for trees. Yeah. So he did a great job for the number that he had, mm -hmm. right? You have to give him kudos to that, right? So, and then as it went forward, I think Ryan, when Ryan was here, the budget was all the way up to 60,000 or 62,000. Right. But he, the tree warden position was taken away from him at that point before he spent any of that budget. So that whole 62,000 then went to the new tree warden, Dennis Tucker. But that and I was believe in once that happened, there wasn't tree work done for a solid six or eight months. I forget what happened logistically, but there was quite a period that the tree work wasn't really, and then once he started working, then it took several more months to get, to use up the 62,000. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, and in speaking with Dennis Tucker, uh, I made it clear to him that I, I meant no disrespect when I was discussing it with him in the open meeting here, uh, but that I was passionate that we could save quite a bit of money using the highway to assist with the tree work. And basically in finding all these documents after the fact, I was actually right. And, and Dennis Tucker and I had a good conversation where he said, yep, I, I do believe you could save money, but I was really focused more on safety than the actual money. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, think, it, I think there was also some of that delay was uh, that delay, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't, I wasn't here. So, so. I, I was here for that period and, and I will admit it, it wasn't maybe the thing that was foremost in my mind, but if I remember correctly, what happened was that Dennis attempted to coordinate with the highway department, wasn't getting support for the driver in the bucket truck, and then shifted to the model of having them supply all the people so that he wouldn't have to do the coordination with the highway department. Yeah, I, I'm not privy so to that, so I, yeah. I, I seem to remember we had okay. a, a bunch of communication snafus where truck showed up, didn't have the ground crew there, issues like that occurred, so no work occurred. So then when that contract was over, he went ahead and put out a contract for, you know, lock, stock, and barrel. So, um, I'm not 100% certain, but I seem to remember that, that Dennis came to the select board at least once, maybe twice during that time period to say, hey, I'm having a hard time uh, scheduling with mm -hmm. the highway, and then asking to go out to bid for that soup to nuts version of getting rid of yeah. the trees. So I don't so, want to. I don't want to so, read. So long as so long as we have, and so long as we have, like clear prioritization and clear expectations with highway to support the bucket truck, I, I don't object to going back to that model. Well, I think we're going to insist that that happen well, or, or well, run, that's what right? I'm so I, yeah, I, I exactly. was using nicer yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm passionate about saving the town money and and getting the the work done, right? right? So, so, uh, so, so I don't want to rehash the whole thing, but I, I do want to say that I, I wish I had this documents prior to our meeting, it would have been better. But so Dennis has now actually sent the bid out. So I think we're on a path forward. Yeah, just understand even if we're getting it, even if it winds up quote unquote $300 a tree, you got to add about probably about $100 a tree for our crew. Maybe but more than still, that, but rough. Yeah, yeah you're, but you're right. So but it's, it's, it's still, it'll still significant be, it's savings. still going to be 400 instead of seven or 800. And I just so, find, I mean, the only thing I find interesting is if this many trees got down in that time period. How did we have such a backlog? How did we well, have such a backlog and why do we have, well, why did that money sit in that account? Because number one, the were they taking it out of Chapter Ninety? I, I call them the cater no, I call them the caterpillar trees, right? Remember five six years ago we had that onslaught of yeah. the caterpillars and, and and it decimated so many trees. I remember Ryan Pomprion, the previous highway superintendent, saying how he got National Grid to take out two hundred trees over the power lines, right? So can you imagine the trees we've taken down in the last few years that had we not had the 200, what our budget would be. And in speaking with other towns, Brimfield, they used to have a low budget, 10, 12,000 every year. With the Caterpillar trees, it jumped up to 20,000. East Brookfield, very similar. But ironically, we, we have the most money allocated for trees than any of the surrounding towns. They're roughly 20 to 30,000 and we, at 60 so if we have 60 to do with the highway department with the help of a bucket truck and, and an individual in the bucket I think we're going to get a, a fair amount of the hazard trees done especially with Dennis Tucker well in every storm uh, we keep getting more trees yeah, keep coming yeah. down so Dennis <laughs> Tucker is gonna uh, in, in speaking to him he's gonna identify the more dangerous ones to hit first and then we'll just have a schedule moving forward mm. so I think it'll be a good collaboration going forward Was that it for that? Or? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, approve select board meeting minutes for 5-23-24, 5-30-24, 7-11-24. Motion to approve the minutes as stated. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> One, or, other thing. Oh. <laughs> One other thing. Um, can we get on the next agenda? I got an ADA request um, that I think we need to talk about. Um, I, I don't think it's an, I don't think it's urgent enough to talk about in terms of like under the f within 48 hours yeah. type thing. But I think typically if somebody asks for um, facilitation to come to a meeting you have like two weeks like, right. like there's supposed to be a two-week expectation of, of giving us that much time to figure out how to accommodate it I forwarded the yep. I forwarded the request to Ron I, I have forwarded that to town council to see I guess the, the scope of what we need to right to address. So I just want to make sure we put it on the next agenda so yeah, we, we can talk can. about it once Did we, we get an answer it back. to us or uh, I no, I did oh, not. Okay. I have not forwarded right. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to find I, out once I, again. I, I, I received it. it. Ron has it. Ron forwarded it to to um, KP. KP, which is what I was hoping you were going to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, and and then we just need to figure out what our steps are going to be. But I just want to make sure we get that on the agenda. Okay. And and if you want to send it out informationally in support of the next agenda, so that we'll they do. have it, then yep. we can do that. Yeah. I'll, I'll send. In fact, I'll. Probably in about five minutes, it'll be yep. in your inbox. Yep. So now I'll give you a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did I get back everything that needed that was signed? I think so. Well, I don't have anything in my pocket with a flag. Mm -hmm. Mostly I need the contract and the, um, and the, and the primary stuff, yeah, the warrant.